UTSA finally did it. We have won our first bowl game in program history. There was a lot of craziness going on yesterday on Twitter with the rumors that eventually got validated by some of the top media guys, Pete Thamel and, and some of the guys closer to the program, that Frank Harris was not going to play. That definitely threw a monkey wrench in things, and it made a lot of folks nervous about what the result was going to be like. I think we all stepped into this situation and thought, you know what? This is our best opportunity to win a bowl game. And there's a lot of folks who who tried to drum up the, well, we don't really care about a bowl game and these sorts of things. And there's a lot of that going, going around. And I think, I, listen, I've talked about it a lot on this podcast. Bowl games don't hold the value that they used to. That is also a true thing. And I think that's what people are talking about. Right. But for us as UTSA, having not won one yet in program history, having made it to several and we've lost all of them, it seems like as soon as the big game comes, we always lose. And for me, I've said this at the beginning of the season. I think a bowl victory will still stamp success on the season. We're not going to go undefeated every season. We're not going to win conference every season. But for a program that is very young, that is trying to establish a winning culture, I think this does that. We had just think about our last couple of seasons, man, and, and have the context of where we are as a program. The last, the two seasons prior to this, we were conference champions, but we lost in the bowl game. This particular season, yeah, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't there. Were, it was filled with a lot of off the field chaotic things our coach getting poached away we we've had to deal with injuries mid-season to our quarterback we've had you know guys in the transfer portal leaving and, and and all of that type of stuff when you think about that and you really like put it all together us getting this bowl victory still stamps hey this is another very good winning season and something that the team should be proud of three consecutive years where we can say we really, really accomplished something. We we hung two, two Conference USA banners, and we captured our first uh, bowl victory in, in three years. We've had three amazing years, and I know there's a lot going on with money and, and stuff like that. Those are things that are still relevant, but we need to celebrate uh, uh, what we've done this season, and I think it's something to be celebrated. And I'm, I can tell you now I'm over the moon about it. I'm over the moon. I can't wait. I'm doing this 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 pod early, but I can't wait to go out and going to work and stuff like that. And there's the guys who watch football, and they are going. I'm sure they watched the game last night. We were on Big ESPN and we won the game. It was it was really good, and I think we learned uh, um, some stuff. I can tell you this too. I I, I want to give Owen McCown a shout out here. He started the game just awful. It was not a good start. We got two early interceptions. Uh, one that was just that was just. I don't know if before the play they predetermined they were going to th throw it regardless, but the interception they threw um, over to Taiki Ogokelo's side was was just crazy. He just didn't even look at what the corner was doing and just threw the ball up for grabs. Right, the corner was doing a bail technique. You're never going to complete. You know they had they're o they're on top of the receiver there. The receiver has no chance there. Right, so um, yeah, that that wasn't great. Obviously, he threw one over the middle to Big Oscar, which um, Oscar dropped, and it popped up in the air, and uh, Marshall took advantage of that. And then two plays later, they lined up in wild, wild uh, cat formation, and they uh, scored a touchdown on it, right? So you got to give that – that touchdown is squarely on the offense. Um, and then you got to look at our defense. Yo, our defense played great last night. Listen – I know they were playing against Cole Pennington, which is the backup quarterback for Marshall. But listen, that kid also showed that he has some arm talent. That he has, if you give him time, he has uh, he can he can put together some you know some some nice completions, some real sharp completions, and um, you know their running game wasn't bad at all. So I think that we did a really good job at at, at, at shutting them down. And if you just think about it, our defense gave up. Um, I, you know, 10 points maybe, right? So, you know, that's great. 17 points total uh, is what we gave up. But what have I said all year? All year this has been consistent. Our defense, for the most part, adjusted well in the second half. We gave up 17 points as a team in the first half. Goose egg in the second half. Our D, who, like our DC, they, they, are, they are very good about going into the locker room, seeing what hurt us, making adjustments, 
and then coming out in the second half and mashing on the gas and making sure we take away those things that offenses uh, were able to take advantage of. And we did that very, very well. And, you know, we, we pitched the shutout in the second half to show for it. Uh, but, yeah, I, listen, I, I, another thing about Owen McCown that I just think that needs to be called out, um, obviously his resilience and him um, um, throwing those interceptions that weren't great, but the ability to not care, not care. Like you make a mistake, press on, press on. I think he, he, he grew into the game, right? He started off bad, but grew into the game. Once he starts to get comfortable, he starts to run. He start to run the ball more. He extended plays. He made some some nice runs himself. He's athletic. Listen, I can tell you this: he has some zip on his. Uh, he has some zip on his passes, and I like that. That is a different style of of you know quarterbacking than what we're used to. Because Frank Harris doesn't throw with a lot of zip, right? He's more of a finesse thrower and things like that. And you know, uh, Owen McCown is not that, right? So. Um, I think that was something nice to see. There's going to be a different element. He's a different, you know, he has some different tools um, um, to, his, uh, to his disposal. But I think he did some really good things uh, after he settled into the game or grew into the game. I think the play calls start to get a little bit more um, fine-tuned to what he uh, what his strengths were and to keep him comfortable and to get him settled up. So I will give hats off to the OC for that. I think – the OC had to make an adjustment based on what um, was going on with his quarterback at the time. And I think the run, so listen, some of the, the run game helped a lot of that stuff out. Some of the just easy pitching catches, like the, like the touchdown of Joshua Cephas, nice play action boot out. And, and you just, you know, drop it off to him right there in front of Owen and he does the rest and, and scores a touchdown. But like you, we need stuff like that. I won't say the OC had a perfect game. There was definitely some play calls that was just, uh, confusing. Like I said, we have that, that's consistent too. Every game we have these head scratcher play calls, and I got a lot of feedback on Twitter about some of those. And you guys definitely voiced yourselves on some of those some of those things. But I can tell you this: early in the night, um, I felt like we were all sort of feeling the same. Like, oh my gosh, here we go again. Whenever we went down ten points early, we just thought, like, you know what? This is this is. Um, Happening to us again in a big game on the biggest stage, we don't deliver. And I, I want to give uh, Jeff Trailer his credit also. That right there, especially with him going to interview in other places, what I the team's resilience after we get punched in the mouth, you know, and down 10 0. And I know those guys are probably, it's in the back of their minds too, like, oh my gosh, bowl game, a lot of these guys have experience. You want to do this stuff for for Frank and and Rashad Wisdom who got hurt in the game, and you know it's, it's just it's just re- I'm really good at for both of those guys because you know they've done so much for the program and they couldn't actually be on the field and f- uh, for Wisdom's case he couldn't be on the field he was on the field some but he couldn't finish the game he um, couldn't be on the field to be for that for that bowl win um, <clears throat> because to me that would have just been a perfect way to exit out but you know things happen for a reason but anyway. Um, Back to the trailer piece, it, you know, whenever you have a team that responds like that with you still after you've taken job interviews elsewhere, really just shows you how much the team is bought into him and how much they are all in sync as a team, how much Coach Trailer is one with his squad. There's no disconnect. If there's disconnect there, you guys will be surprised at how some of those things play into how players react on game day. If they're if, if all the players aren't back in their coach and 100% bought into what their coach is selling, it is easy for guys to be undisciplined. It is easy for guys to it's easy for guys to spite their coaches. It is easy for guys to you know, just lose focus because they're they're mad about something, right? And to me, we saw none of that yesterday. What he has done with this program and the buy-in that he has from everyone, that stuff is huge. That stuff is huge, and it gives me confidence going forward that, you know, he's at least going to have the team support. He's going to at least have the guys bought in. It just shows me that the stuff around him and the people who have influence on – Getting new, getting the, the the indoor practice facility, and getting that man the resources and support that he needs. 
It just shows me that you guys are on the clock. You guys are on the clock. He, we, we have something special in that coach, man. We have something special in that coach. And we need to nourish that, and we need to make sure that we do everything possible to um, uh, work with him to get these things done. Because to me, that, that part, if that team wasn't fully yoked together, you know, we don't, we don't bounce back from 10 points like that. And to me, like I said, that's a testament of what culture they've built uh, or Coach Trailer has built at UTSA and the culture that we want to continue to. Like that stuff right there, being all bought in to the system, is what wins you games against teams that you're supposed to lose to. It's what keeps you consistent. It's what keeps you in the winner's column year in and year out. That, that is what it is. And to me, that was impressive, and it was a great way to cap off the season. So uh, I'm really, really excited for what's to come. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys want a live chat. I am not able to do it uh, this afternoon because I have some work obligations that I just can't get out of. So um, if you guys want uh, a, a live chat, I am free to do it tomorrow. I will um, uh, probably put something out on Twitter as well to see if what people – uh, feel about that, but if you want something in the live chat, be sure to leave a comment in on this video. So, uh, just another huge shout out to UTSA. I am a happy, happy road runner today that we got our first bowl victory, and I will see you guys soon. Peace.